What's up, everyone? This is Kenny here from Property Stories. And today, we're going to talk about rental income. Ah, this rental income, right, is a subject that is very, very popular. I get a lot of questions from this from my audience. So today, I'm trying to give you like a guide you know, on rental income and some of the FAQs I got here. I got a lot of FAQs here. I'm going to answer them. So first things first, before you proceed, right, rental income, there's only three documents involved. Number one is the tenancy agreement, stamp tenancy agreement. Number two is the bank statement where the renter is credited. Number three is the proof of ownership. Proof of ownership here means the S&P bearing your name. You were a borrower, right? And then the strata title or assessment. Okay, these are like a few things that can show that you that you own the property. How about loan of letter? You ask. Loan of letter only applicable if you are buying sub sale. If you are buying a uh, under con. You do not have the property address there, okay? So these are the three, only three items that you need to remember. And when you submit to the banker, please lah, bankers are also human for now, okay? In the future, when things are all online and you just need to do your own data entry, that will come. But for now, your bankers are also human. Try lah, okay, to see, to organize your information like this, rental income like this. Especially uh, you have so many properties. We all bankers are see also headache sometimes. So when we see headache, right, what we do is that, ah yeah, this one don't do ah. too many idea, the tenancy agreement. Then someone alone amount so small, or loan amount so no, so big also don't do. Go other case. Okay? <laughs> Human ma. So you can try organize it like this. The uh, one I'm showing you on the screen. You just split down from where the property is, how much the rental income, when is it credited, ah? Huh? When is it credited? Very important. Because the bank wants to know when is it credited. Then how much is it credited? And to those who are computer savvy out there, you will ask me, is it okay if I actually highlight in the PDF, highlight, uh, edit the PDF and highlight to show that where the rental is credited so it's easier for the banker? I would uh, not recommend you to do that. Uh, please, Don't. I do not recommend. Because why? Because you are tampering with the document. Yes, nowadays you can download online or PDF, right? Then... This is called document tampering. It's a very serious offense. Uh. It's a fraud. So the moment the bank just see this, right, the bank will just ask you for a new copy. They don't want this. Okay? What you can do is that you create an Excel like what I'm showing you right now. You save and then send to, to the banker. Okay? Send to the banker or print out and give to the banker. It's up to you. But just make the banker's life easier. Lah. So second is organize your documents. I have already explained at length, so I'm not going to continue. How much, how much the income is recognized, rental income? Rental income, right, from what I heard in the market, is about 80 to 100%. Yes, some banks do take 100% rental income. But you don't be happy first, uh, the requirement is very stringent. Uh, very, very stringent. Okay, Some banks is like 50%. So you have to ask your banker, the around your banker that you want to submit loan, what, how much, how much, what's the rental income rec recognition? How many percent? Then they will tell you. And then what documents they will need and how long. Some documents, right, it requires them to be like three months minimum. Some require six months. Some, uh, just stamp also can already apply loan. So you may consult your bankers on this. Next one is that sometimes there's uh, special cases. Uh, special cases here, special approval. You may not know when there's straightway change. Uh, and I give you an example. COVID-19 at the time. There are banks, right, who totally do not recognize rental income, you know, zero. So at the time when you want to take a loan from them, but they don't recognize your rental income, zero, you also loan rejected, lah. too bad, lah. you need to try other bank, lah. okay? So this kind of case actually happens from time to time. The bank will evaluate the risk and see, act accordingly. Lah. And once they act, right, it's usually immediate. Lah. This kind of things are usually immediate. There's no delay daily. So we come to the Frequently asked questions, FAQ. The first one that I usually get, I always get, is no stamping can. Uh. The tenancy agreement don't stamp. Is it still can recognize as rental income? Yes, can. Some banks, they allow. Some banks, they insist on you stamping it. Okay? So you have to check with the bank uh, which one they want. But let me tell you, just give you a heads up. Uh. The easier you make the bank's life, the easier for your loan to pass. Remember this, uh, remember this statement. So, let's just say the second one is a follow-up question. 
what is the implication of not stamping your tenancy agreement? Okay, if you do not stamp your tenancy agreement, you just wait and wait. one day, the taxman is going to come after you and the penalty is going to be very, very severe. Okay, you can either get jailed or you have to pay like a very big penalty and that time uh, you rayu you or you beg also for leniency also is very hard for you to pass. Okay, so I would suggest, highly suggest that you actually pay it and get it stamped. Pay the tenancy agreement to get it stamped. But yes, in uh, KL's language, the culture here is that the tenant is the one that is paying the stamp fee. So you charge the tenant, make sure that the stamp, the tenancy agreement is stamped. Then some of you will be asking, so uh, since the I'm not buying another property, so I don't understand. Well, I cannot say that you must. It's up to you, right? It's your own risk. So don't when you want to buy a property at time, then then you go and back this stamp, you cannot you cannot the penalty. Ah. Uh, Cannot penalty, never mind. You know, who knows? They were just like, oh, past two years, uh, never stamp at all. I don't back this stamp. Uh. So we need to ask you for your documents for the past, like what, seven years. Habis, investigate, send you a letter. Then, at the time you cry. Uh. Okay? You never know, okay? So what I can advise you is highly recommend you to stamp. Next question I get, uh, oh, you know, I rented out my room. Is this is room rental acceptable for in the eyes of the bank? I would say that you can try because I personally did before room rental cases where it's approved. You know why? Because the room rental, every room, uh, let's just say the house, uh, it was a landed house, it got seven rooms, I think. So the, every room, they did a tenancy agreement and they stamp. Uh, and the stamp is clearly credited into the account, you can see. So... Yes, it is accepted as income. Next is the question that gets that I simply put a high figure enough to get loan can. You all know right, how the bank count. So what happens is that some of the customers, they will try to get a tenancy agreement, a fake tenancy agreement. Lah. Okay. And then they put there a different, uh, the the amount that of rental that it requires to pass the loan. Since you know the bank recognizes how many percent, right? My answer to you is that the bank is not stupid. Lah, okay. Let's just say you talk about a service apartment. Service apartment, then you go online, iProperty or Property Guru or any portals, right? Then you see this service apartment, three rooms, 2,000. Then suddenly, uh, you come here and tell me, oh, okay, three rooms, I get 5,000. A bit sus, la, okay? Who's the one that can pay 5,000 from suddenly 2,000 here? Who's the one that can pay? So, the, of course, the bank going to reject. You can say, are you how much you want that really this is a tenant and this is what I'm getting. You can see in my bank statement. And you can even call a tenant if you want. Okay. I'm not saying that every every time case comes, it's, it's fake. Huh? Okay. I'm not saying that. I'm just trying to show you that the what the banks put in the guidelines, they are called guidelines for a reason. So the banker, the officer can choose not to accept it. If the banker or officer choose not to accept, then your loan will not pass. Okay? Next one is like, I just stamped my tenancy agreement. Is it okay to take a loan now? Yes, some banks are allowed. However, I would like to caution you. Uh, when you receive the 2.5 month deposit, this is for KL, uh, KL slang. 2.5 month deposit, then one month is paid the agent, correct? So 2.5 month deposit must be in before the before on the tenancy agreement date, okay? So then it will be accepted that you already commenced the tenancy and they can take the income from that tenancy agreement stamp. Okay, next question I get is usually, my tenant paid some repairs, the number is itself, uh, the many numbers won't tell you, will this affect my loan? Can I accept or not? Uh, my answer to you is that this is very normal. Sometimes you get your tenants to repair. Let's just say your monthly uh, rent is 2000 Then suddenly you say, okay, la, tenant, you settle this. Ah. One small, small minor repairs at home. Then 100 ringgit. So the tenant actually bank, you, bank in for you 1900 right? No problem. Just take the 1900 and get a receipt from the tenant. Ah. That's it. The banks will still accept. However, it's also very subjective. And I would highly encourage you to talk to your tenant. Ah. Say, you bank in the... Um, uh, what a round figure or uh, bank it as per the tenancy agreement then i will refund you or something okay i will pay use another account to pay you for the repairs that you did 
make sure you keep your receipt. Okay, make sure you go and get a receipt. Whether scan, copy, or not, you can just now using your phone, right? You scan, then you keep, and then pass them the money. It's okay. Next question I get is that uh, owner is A but rental character to B. Can he take for income? This is quite common uh, when you hear husband and wife story, especially husband and wife story. The husband will buy the property under his own name. Then when rented out uh, for tenancy agreement, you put under the wife's name. So the max, the the tenant will bang into the wife. I would say the answer is no because, yeah, you are husband and wife, but the title, even though the title is also paid by husband, everything paid by husband, the SMP also husband name, the bank will still not allow. The banks will want A as a landlord to also be the one that receiving the rental income. Okay? You cannot put it in other person's name. It will consider as zero. So the next question, right, I'm sure you'll get is that if let's say there's a two names in the S and P, well, two names in the loan, then the tenancy agreement must sign with both names. Uh. No, actually one person enough. Really. But the income, right, credited into uh, an account, any account, uh, some banks uh, were to, conserv- to be conservative, they will take only half. Example, the rental to 2000 a month. They will take it as 1000 Okay? There's no escape unless you both apply together. Lah. So that's it for the rental income and also the FAQs. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave the questions in the comments down below. I'll try to take as many questions and answer it on video. So in conclusion, if you cannot remember what I've mentioned here too long for you for whatever reason, just remember these three things, okay? First, your tenancy agreement. Second, bank statement. Third, proof of ownership. Keep all this properly. And the biggest rule, there's just one rule to follow when it comes to getting the banks to recognize your rental income. Play by their rules. Play by their rules, okay? Play by the bank's rules. Make it easy for them. Follow the SOP. And you'll be fine. You don't have to actually listen to all these any more videos after this. Just remember this one sentence and you will be fine. You will definitely get your loan approved and also your rental income recognized. Okay? So to those who would like to apply for a loan, my links are below. I just click the link and we can start talking and apply for a loan. Or if you have not subscribed to the channel, do hit the subscribe button down below as well. You can always change your mind. This is Kenny here from Property Stories and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.